Good afternoon again. Thanks once more for being here in the Science Center at Aminico. Next up, we have Heidi Baxter. Heidi has a background in industrial chemistry, but works now as a software developer. Oh, sorry. Her talk is entitled, A Girl's Guide to Growing a Moustache with Python. <laughs> And today, I'm going to talk to you about a girl's guide to growing a moustache. And you say, well, how on earth can a girl grow a moustache? But that is what I'm going to talk about. I'm not a Python programmer. I'm an enthusiast. It's not my day job. I work as a Microsoft programmer. And my degree was in chemistry, but I wound up in computing. I wrote a book for Addison Wesley immediately before they brought out a new version. And my book was out of date. I got my 15 minutes of fame, and then it was gone. And some people's talks demonstrate how clever they are. But my talk is about how clever Python is. I started using Python six months ago. Don't use it at work, only use it at home. And this is where I got to, just using Python at home. And that's what I'm saying. Python is the star. And there she is, collecting her Oscar. I wrote a book, but it's now so totally out of date that nobody cares. And you say, well, now I'm going to talk about the moustache. You have to steal one from a picture. That's what I'm going to talk about. Taking an image with a moustache in it and transposing it to another image. And so it started. I got a Raspberry Pi, and I thought, what am I going to do? I don't want to feed my dog. I don't want to water my plants. What am I going to do? I want to do something better than that. So you have a tough problem. You consult an expert. I consulted my daughter. She looked up from her mobile phone and said, make it steal a man's moustache and put it on the face of Taylor Swift. <laughs> That's what she said to do. So you say, sounds, sounds easy. But then I looked at it, and the programmer in me showed me there were many different technical, interesting technical problems to solve. I'd have to work on any face, regardless of shape, size, position, lighting. I'd need to train it to understand the mustache. The faces were already trained. There's a lot of databases already trained. But the mustache, I had to train myself. So it wasn't just a case of cutting and pasting mustache. I had to do more than that. So that's why I decided that's what I would do with my Raspberry Pi. Start on the journey to give Taylor Swift a mustache. So I thought, what do I have to do? I have to use image pyramids for blending and scaling. I have to use the histogram of oriented gradients for object detection. I have to detect the faces. I have to detect the facial features. I have to detect the facial landmarks to align the two images. Then I have to align the images, blend the skin tones, and also, I'm going to talk about training your own object classifier. So what did I use? I started off, I used OpenCV. OpenCV is a very excellent open source computer vision library. There's many different um, functions that it has. And they're all aimed at real-time computer vision. There are libraries for image processing libraries for video analysis, 
libraries for facial feature detection, object detection people have trained OpenCV libraries to find pumpkins and road signs and um, number plates on cars, all kinds of things. The other main library I used was DLib. DLib I found to be much better at finding the facial features than OpenCV. DLib is a soft, has software components for data structures, linear algebra, machine learning, image processing, all kinds of things. And so the first step was to detect the face. Detect the face in images, in video streams. And the first step to detecting the face is using image pyramids. And you say, what on earth is an image pyramid? So usually we work with an image constant size, but sometimes we want different resolutions of the same image. And in taking different resolutions of the same image, we create the image pyramid. Lots of different size images. And in those different size images, we search for our object that we don't know how big it is when we start. The different sets of images are called image pyramids because if you stack them up, you get the big one at the bottom, little one at the top, looks like a pyramid. And there are two kinds of pyramid. There's Gaussian pyramid, and this is a program which I used to find the Gaussian pyramids. And that's an example of my image pyramid. Different size images, all based on the same image, different resolutions. And if you're looking for a face in any of those, you can look in all the different size images. And the other kind of pyramid is the Laplacian pyramid. And that I'm going to talk more about later. So now we've got our image pyramids. Now we're looking at the histogram of oriented gradients. And you say, what on earth are those? If you look at this, you have the different angles, different tones, um, darker to light, different angles, and how they correspond to each other. So if you have a light tone next to a dark tone, how it corresponds. And you calculate the different correspondence of the different tones in your image. So now we're detecting a face in the image. There's my two faces. And I found this man. I think he's a Turkish man. And he had a magnificent mustache. And we decided. He's the guy that's going <laughs> to. He's going to donate his moustache to Taylor Swift. So we've got our image, we've got our image pyramids, we've got our histograms. Now we're looking for edges because another step in finding your image is to find your edges. You have to find the edges. And the edges are basically the difference, the extreme difference in tone. And that's what the, your edges are. If you've got a dark tone next to a light tone, you're finding the edges. And we want to, an edge detector which can accurately, reliably find edges without too much noise, without finding too many false edges. And there are two different types of edge detector that I use. There's the canny edge detector, who was named after Mr. Canny. And this, this is a little program which finds the canny edges. And it's pretty good. It, it's missed a few bits. But in the tones of the picture, there's not the extreme tones. And that's where it's missed bits where there, there are no extreme tones to find. But you get the idea of the edges. 
The other kind of edge detector that I used was a Sobel edge, edge detector. And this uses first order derivatives and it has a horizontal and vertical. And that is an example of the Sobel edge detector. You can see one of them looks very long and one of them looks very wide and that's the two different kinds of Sobel edge detector. And that's an example of all of the edge detectors for the two different images that I started with. So we have the Canny edge detector and the Sobel edge detector as comparison. So now we've found our edges, we're going to find some facial features. So how do we go about this? We're going to detect the facial landmarks. And you see the facial landmarks. You find the eyes, the nose, the eyebrows, the mouth, all the way around the face. And DLib is very good at fi finding this. And in finding it, you can then say, all we have to do, lay one over the other, as my daughter says, bam, you're done. But it's much harder than that. We come across to align the edges, and you say, how hard can it be? But you try aligning the pictures, they don't even line up. One face is bigger than the other, nowhere near. So you say, OK, now we have to do something more complicated than that. And then we go to the next step, which is the Delaunay triangles. And if you've seen movies where they're um, finding faces, they always put triangles over the face. And they find the face using the triangles. And so that's what I'm doing. I've got the two sets of triangles. And now we're going to join one set to the other. And that's how we're going to composite the two faces. And so you say, this is just an example of how we're going to do the blending. We've got an apple and an orange. We're using our image pyramids. And you come to here and you say, that's what it looks like if you just join them together with no blending. You blend them together, and that sharp edge is now gone. And you say, how am I going to composite the images? I'm going to use something called a Procrustes analysis. And if you've heard of your Greek mythology, Procrustes was some guy who lived in the mountains. He invited people into his inn, but they had to be able to sleep on his iron bed. And if he didn't fit, he made them fit. He, he cut their legs off. He stretched them. He made them fit that bed. And that's what we're using with the images. The Procrustes analysis morphs the images together in the same manner that Procrustes did fitting people to his bed. And so in the first image, we've just composited the images over one another. We've kind of lined up the image, the landmarks, but the faces are the wrong size. And in the second image, we've used the Procrustes analysis, and now they actually match. And so we've got our Procrustes analysis, we've got our image pyramids, we've got everything right up to the point where now we have to find our mustache. And so OpenCV has a library to do training. And there are two steps to the training. You find lots of images, lots and lots of images. And what you need is lots of negative images with no mustaches or pumpkins or whatever it is you're 
thinking of and lots of images with the moustache. And so you collect them together with your negative images, your positive images, and you train your algorithm to say, these ones are moustaches, but don't find a moustache over here. So we got thousands of negative samples. Then we got positive samples everywhere. I tried to find variations, as many variations as I could find. Different sizes, different lighting. I trained my mustache. And then the last thing we did is you say the step we got, we found the facial landmarks, we rotated, we scaled, translated, adjusted the color band, balance, blended the features, we wrote the little program. Finally, Taylor Swift has a mustache. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Heidi. Uh, we have time for questions. I see hands raising. I'm going to go there. I have first question. What did your daughter say? She said, yeah, it's OK. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My name is Imad. And I came to the talk because out of intrigue and curiosity, the title was very nice. Now the question is, the image near the nose and the cheeks near the nose itself, are they from the Taylor Swift or from the man in this image? The nose, what, what it is, I, it, the skin has to be blended around. And also because there's a, a shadow cast by the mustache, the lighting has changed. So I think the nose, my, my classifier isn't, isn't very good and it really needs more, more training. So I think there's a tiny little bit of nose has been collected by the mustache trainer, so yes. In order to get the... To, yeah. Yeah. It, it's my, my classifier needs more training and the, the algorithms that train the face out um, landmark um, detector had 60,000 pictures and I had about 500. So if I had more time, train it better, you get better results. But as a first attempt, that's, that's what I come up with. Yeah, really great session. Thanks a lot for that. I was just wondering if uh, Flutterbugs had contacted you and offered you a job. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Maybe they should. Yes. Um, great, great talk, presentation. Um, I can see this application in, especially in the, in the history field where you've got um, uh, like especially with architecture or landscaping and the evolution of it and transposing um, those sites using this. Do we have any other question? So I have one. What, I mean, while is your code online? Can we can we can look at this code it and learn from it? But I can put it online. Yes, it's. So, oops. We have one last question, if I don't die. Who? Uh, firstly, thank you, but you mentioned six months, um, the start of your Python experience. Yes. Was that just for this project, and why did you choose Python, if it was? I chose Python because I had a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> and that, that's where I started. I didn't, I got a Raspberry Pi and said, what am I going to do with it? And my husband said, do some Python, there's Python on Raspberry Pi, because I've done a lot on the Arduino, I've done a lot of C code, but I decided to do Python instead. 
Thank you, Heidi, very much. And again, we have in this from PyCon to you. It's a mug. You can put a moustache on the mug if you want. <laughs> Thank you very much.